Before diving into specific reactions of enols and enolates, I wanted to take a video to talk about the general reactivity of these intermediates. Enolates are the conjugate bases of carbonyl compounds and are generated via deprotonation at the alpha position. Enols are isomers, more specifically tautomers, of carbonyl compounds in which an alpha hydrogen migrates to the carbonyl oxygen. A key difference between enolates and enols in the starting or parent carbonyl compound is that we lack the CO double bond and we have a new CC double bond between the carbonyl carbon and the alpha carbon in both cases. This results in nucleophilic reactivity at the alpha carbon that's lacking in the starting carbonyl compound. And we can draw resonance structures that illustrate this. So for example, in the enolate, we can draw a resonance structure in which there is negative charge at the alpha carbon and a neutral carbonyl oxygen. And analogously for the enol, we can draw a resonance structure in which there is again negative charge at the alpha carbon, but the carbonyl oxygen is now positively charged. These resonance forms with negative charge at the alpha carbon highlight and emphasize the idea that the alpha carbon is nucleophilic or electron donating or an electron source in these intermediates. We should also notice that the oxygens in these intermediates have non-bonding lone pairs. And these lone pairs make the oxygen atom nucleophilic in and of itself in both the enolate and to a lesser extent the enol. So these intermediates present us with an interesting situation where the molecules are nucleophilic or Lewis basic at both carbon and oxygen. This means that when we treat an enolate or an enol with an electrophile, two outcomes are possible. Let's focus on the enolate first and let's imagine a generic electrophile E+. Oxygen can act as a nucleophile toward this electrophile in something like an A sub N or SN2 or ADN type of elementary step where the oxygen is acting as nucleophile. The resulting product contains a new bond between oxygen and the electrophile and retains the double bond that we had in the original enolate. This product looks like an enol in which E is replacing hydrogen, but it also looks like an ether because we have an oxygen linked to two groups, the originally electrophilic group and the unsaturated group. For this reason, because it looks like both an enol and an ether, it's called an enol ether. That's one possibility and involves the formation of an OE bond. However, the alpha carbon can also act as a nucleophile. And when this occurs, a new bond is formed between the alpha carbon and the electrophile. The resulting product contains a carbon-oxygen double bond and a new bond between the alpha carbon and electrophile. And this is simply a substituted carbonyl compound. Generally, we're more interested in this kind of reactivity because if the electrophile is carbon, this results in the formation of a carbon-carbon bond. In addition, reactions at the alpha carbon tend to be more favored thermodynamically because we have a stronger CO double bond in the carbonyl compound product resulting from reactivity of the alpha position than the CC double bond that appears when the oxygen acts as a nucleophile. So even though this might be the best resonance form of an enolate, we often see reactivity of the alpha position. This is particularly true when the enolate is generated under equilibrium or thermodynamically controlled conditions, since the most stable product of these two for the same electrophile tends to be the carbonyl compound and not the enol ether. Analogously, enols can react as nucleophiles either at oxygen or at carbon, but because enols are very commonly generated under equilibrium conditions, reactions at carbon are much, much more common. Using this resonance structure on the right, the electron flow is exactly analogous to the nucleophilic reactivity of the enolate. The only difference is that we have a positively charged oxygen where we have a neutral oxygen in the enolate. The product that results here looks a lot like the substituted carbonyl compound that we generated from the reactivity of the alpha carbon of the enolate. However, we now have positive charge on the carbonyl oxygen. The positive charge that we see on oxygen in this resonance form is carried through to the resulting product, which immediately anyway is a protonated carbonyl. Now, under catalytic conditions or under basic workup, this oxygen will be deprotonated to give the neutral carbonyl compound product. And this shows us two different ways to get to a substituted carbonyl compound from either an enol or enolate intermediate. 
If we think about how the enol or enolate was generated through a deprotonation process at the alpha carbon, we'll realize that from the perspective of the original carbonyl compound, this looks like a substitution reaction. A hydrogen that was linked to the alpha position is replaced with E, the electrophilic group. So from the enol or enolate's perspective, we're doing an electrophilic substitution reaction. From the electrophile's perspective, this could be a nucleophilic substitution of a nucleophile for a leaving group, or an addition process, and that's sort of what we're seeing here, the addition of E plus and the nucleophile to form a single product. The diversity of reactions of enols and enolates really comes in the structural diversity, the electrophile. As we look at specific reactions of enols and enolates over the next several units, we'll see a variety of different electrophiles engaging with enols and enolates. Halogens, alkyl halides, and even other carbonyl compounds will appear as electrophiles in reactions with these intermediates.